a una de las bandas más importantes de fines de la década de los 60. Glenn Cornick está en Canal X. Welcome to Channel X. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here. I had a great time coming here. It was very exciting to come to South America for my very first time. Glenn, tell us about the first times with Jetro Tal. The first times um, we began by playing around little tiny clubs in England, playing to maybe a hundred people at a time. We did very well. We didn't realize that we were becoming famous. Then we played at a big festival. And when the, the announcer walked on the stage, and there was thousands of people there, everybody knew it was Jethro Tull, and everybody stood up. And we were so surprised and so shocked because every time we played to a hundred people, we were like little children. It was like Christmas to us. What's about your personal relation with the music? It was Ian that wrote all the songs, but there were wonderful songs for me to play to. Um, there were songs that, that gave me a great opportunity to play interesting bass things. Um, if all we'd had to play would, was very straight, simple songs, then maybe I couldn't be so creative. So I have to thank Ian for writing wonderful songs that really helped me to put more into what I did. And some of those, some of those early records, I listen to Benefit now. When we were driving over here, there was some music from Benefit And it still brings some chills to me. I'm still very proud of it. I listen to all kinds of things. Um, I listened to blues when I was maybe 13 or 14 years old. John Lee Hooker and Muddy Waters. But I also listened to British pop music. I lived in a small town. Any chance we had to see anybody, you would go to see them. It wasn't like we lived in London, when you could select, you go, oh, I don't want to see them, I can see them anytime. Anybody that came to town, you thought, wow, this is great, somebody actually comes to my hometown. We would support anybody that came. In the 60s, really a very important uh, bands and groups in England. It's incredible. It was. It was a wonderful time for music. And we were all good friends. When we were down in London, there was maybe half a dozen clubs that we all played. We all used to go and see each other, and we'd often play on the same shows. So we all knew what we were each doing. But none of us really knew where we were going. We were all trying to find something and we didn't know what the something was and that's why we all ended up going different directions but I think some wonderful music came from that period do you remember about the first time that you saw uh, Jeff Beck oh Jeff. Jeff Beck that was that was I was quite young then I was maybe 1966 We were in a small town, the town that Jethro Tull was formed, called Blackpool. And I was in some little tiny local band and that opens the show. And we saw the Yardbirds. And we thought we'd seen a lot of good things. Yardbirds came on stage. Jeff Beck stood on stage like a statue. His face didn't move. He had a Telecaster guitar. And we always wondered how he played the things he played. He stood on stage. He had one hand in his pocket. He played everything with one hand. And we went, oh, what is this instrument? It can't be a guitar. It must be a whole new thing. We were all amazed and guitar was never the same instrument again for any of us. A relation with the Jimi Hendrix experience. Oh. We, we did a lot of gigs with Jimi Hendrix, maybe 
12, 13, 14 gigs. And he was wonderful. He was a very, very nice guy. I read things about him now that, that make him sound like he was always doing drugs and always out of control. I never saw that. Every time we were with Jimi Hendrix, you could talk to him like I'm talking to you now. He was very quiet, very shy, but very natural, very normal. But the first time that Tull played with Jimi Hendrix, we went, beginning of 1969, we went to Stockholm and Copenhagen to do four shows as special guest stars with Jimi Hendrix. We were starting to get a, a little famous then. And the first three shows, we really played well. The fourth show, Jimi Hendrix woke up. He really played. And people walked out from that fourth show and they didn't remember that they'd seen us. <laughs> so it was a wonderful lesson for us. And now, uh, what's about your personal projects? I'm hoping to. Um, we did a, an album with Wild Turkey. That's my old band that I formed after Jethro Tull. I didn't see anybody for 20 years and then we had the chance to make another album. So we made an album about three years ago. But the other guys live in Great Britain and I'm still living in America. I'm hoping to move back to Britain and when I do, we'll be playing with Wild Turkey. What can you say to all the fans of Jethro Tile, to all the people in your way that uh, uh, loves really the music of Jethro Tile and now really, really loves your music? <laughs> well, I can say that. I, I, you've all made me very happy. And another thing, I, I was very pleased to see that there's a lot of young people here who are interested in Jethro Tull. When I'm in the United States, if somebody says Jethro Tull, everybody goes, who? What? At the convention, I played with two wonderful musicians, Maximiliano and Geronimo, a drummer and a guitar player, who are, I think, 18 years old and 20 years old, who weren't even born when I was in Jethro Tull. And they played all the songs, some of the songs I'd forgotten. They had to show me the parts to some of the songs. Everybody that I met at the conventions was wonderful. It was great to, to talk to everybody, shake everybody's hand. And outside the convention, everybody else has been great. I mean, I hope I will be back in Uruguay next year. It's at all possible to get Clive Bunker, the original drummer, to come. I'm sure he would love to come.